I've got this old Trilogy T2S linear motor stage. Uh, it's now a Parker T2S, but it's, um, it's a bed of magnets with a coil that moves through the slot. Uh, there's an IGUS chain that holds the cables for feedback and motor power. Uh, there's a, a bearing for put, putting the load on and the sled for moving the mass. Uh, this, this actuator comes with uh, end stops and end of travel limit. Uh, this one has incremental encoder. It's a Renishaw 5 micron. And there's also hall sensors from an old LEN module, but they're probably doing things a little different now. Other options for feedback could be sine cosine interpolated with halls or Renishaw bis C absolute. Uh, I'm not sure if that actually fits on here, but there's a lot of linear motors now with absolute encoders. So this T2S, uh, depending on the size, you get a different winding. So I have the 210-4 winding on this uh, linear motor. And if we look up the uh, specification for this, we can figure out which, which 210 winding we have based on the resistance. So I measured the uh, resistance between a pair of wires and came out with about 23 ohms. So I have the series winding. So this is all the motor specification here uh, for the drives. And we can enter this into CME2 and use calculated values. Here's some of the uh, Renishaw encoder options. Uh, 1, 5, 0.5 micron, 0.1 micron, uh, depending on the linear motor. And you get some accuracy and repeatability out of these linear motors, which is pretty darn good. And we'll see how to wire this up to the Copley. Uh, incremental encoder A, A naught, B, B naught. If there's an index, we can put an index. I think this motor has a limit switch, so I put that in on the inputs two and three, general purpose. Uh, there could also be a motor temperature sensor. Um, I didn't look for that in this case, but. Uh, they're all, there are Hall effect sensors, UVW. You've got the outer shield, which goes to earth, pin one frame ground on the drive. You can see this, the drive frame is connected to earth. And an in, 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 important note here is the motor power wires that shows a shield and a earth frame. Uh, there is a braided shield with the motor feedback, but it is not connected to the motor case. There's a separate wire um, that you have to connect to earth. The motor case must find a path to earth. There's some capacitive coupling between the coil and the case, and this noise needs to be shunted to ground, or it will interfere with the servo control loops. I'm just going to show the basic setup here. It's a brushless linear motor. It's an incremental encoder. Yes, I have halls, but um, one of the halls is permanently stuck high, so I can't use that. But there is a bis C option, and there's an analog sine cosine option. So various feedback devices could be used. Um, I'm just in a position mode, and you can emulate the output, of course, uh, if you had a bis or something, or you just want to buffer the incremental encoder, or take the sine cosine emulated out. That would be fine. And so we'll check again the motor data. Um, this 60.96 millimeters is the uh, magnetic pair length of the poles or the pitch, a pair of magnets. Um, it's 2.4 inches. So this is definitely an American motor, we think, in inches. Uh, we had to convert this to millimeters to get it to come out correct. This is a big problem for a lot of motors that they don't, if they don't give you the pole pair length, uh, you'll have to measure it yourself. Um, so I'm trying to show here how to take a measurement of the pole pair length. You can see there's a pair of magnets. This could be a, a north magnet. This could be a south magnet. So you need to measure the distance from the first edge to the, not the second edge, but the third edge. So the, the pole length is from edge to edge. So if we measure this distance here, over one period, you can see that it's about 60, uh, 60 millimeters. It's difficult to say 61 millimeters, 
So what you should do is over the entire length of travel, divide that length by the number of pairs, and you'll come out with a more accurate number. Now, the motor comes in sections, so you can have up to as many meters of motor as you'd like. Just keep adding the sections up. But the, a critical factor for this is when you, you have a junction, the, the magnetic pair length needs to add up. If somebody accidentally mounts the magnet all the way to the edge, you're going to have a problem when it comes to commutation. Now, I'm not saying the motor manufacturer would ever make a mistake, but um, if you suddenly get sort of a phase fault during this transition, you, you've got to take a look and make sure you don't have something backwards or upside down. Maybe it's got to be flipped over. So I've got this trilogy hooked up to this Zenus plus drive here. I connected the 24 volts. I have a serial connection so I can do the setup and tuning. Um, with the feedback connected with the incremental encoder and halls, I'm able to move the motor. So if you move a distance of a pair of magnets at a 5 micron, it's 60.95 millimeters per pair length. At 5 microns, that's 12,190 counts per electrical cycle. Or if you move a distance of 60.95 millimeters, you would see 12,190 counts, 1 micron counts. Now, the, the five, or 5 micron counts. The 5 microns is the resolution, not the repeatability. Um, I've hooked up the motor power wires, ABC, UVW, I've got AC power connected, and the stove bypass jumper. So I'm able to enable the drive. I've got a green flashing light uh, for the enable. So I've got 5 micron encoder connected with the loss detection, all the good data. Uh, you can hit calculate to get all the initial tuning parameters, including the continuous current. So the first thing we need to do is phase the motor. So I'm going to take a look at tools, manual phasing. You can use auto phasing, but we kind of measure things to confirm that we got things right. So uh, starting off, uh, we're going to move the distance of one electrical cycle by rotating a current vector one time. So I got one amp applied. This should be enough to overcome friction. So you could apply the continuous current if you want. There's no problem. Uh, so we can uh, start at zero. One pair of mag one pair of magnets is one electrical cycle, so that's for commutation. Um, and of course, you can uh, verify the counts. It's fairly good to confirm the number of counts, but you'll actually need to go through multiple cycles to get to the 12190, um, maybe several electrical cycles to confirm it. But this looks pretty accurate to me. You just want to make sure your number is not off by a factor of 10. Uh, maybe it's a 1 micron instead of a 5 micron, so it's just good to know. And uh, again, I don't have halls. If you had halls, you'd have to phase that. I'm going to recommend halls, but in this case, one's broken, so I'm trying to make progress. So. I'm going to do phase initialization. It's going to ramp up to 5 amps. That may be excessive for this system, so you could just do continuous current. But if there's a lot of friction, maybe the continuous current can't even make it start moving. So you could apply more current to get it over uh, big, big friction. So we're phased here, and now I'm going to be ready to tune the current loop. So we'll take a quick peek at the current loop tuning. Um, I told you about the grounding. I have not connected the, uh, the case to ground yet because I want to show you the effect of not doing that. Um, but the current loop tuning can still be done. Uh, you can increase the gains for more uh, bandwidth, but we'll just leave that alone for the moment. I have sufficient bandwidth. Uh, it's about 800 hertz, so I'm not going very fast, and I never want more bandwidth than I need. And for the velocity loop, it's also nice to look at the uh, continuous current uh, scale, the X cell and D cell limits, depending on your speed and cycle. You know, move the motor to the center so it doesn't bang into the end, and then give it a, a start. So 
got um, this is going to be limited acceleration, so velocity, and um, you can maybe hear a little bit of the not, not much growling with the uh, grounding, but with the uh, configure filters, uh, that's a default value there, two pole. Um, with the two pole, you get a little bit of a little bit more ringing at this gain. And it's a little bit of overshoot, so this gain is pretty good. Um, if I had uh, 700, that might be too much. <laughs> Buzzes, cut it in half. Um, you give it a single pole filter. 700. You can see the buzzing. Um, this is a little bit more noisy, but uh, it does give us a lot more stiffness. I'm going to bring that back down. So I got gain margin and eyeball little phase margin. Um, I can push this out further. But uh, I'm going to start multiplying the noise. Check the grounding here. It's not much quieter without the grounding. So we'll take a look at uh, you know the gains, the integral term again. Um, just don't want too much overshoot there. Um, we'll take a look at the position loop tuning. I'll make a distance of one electrical cycle, which is uh, 12192 in auto setup, channel 3, current actual, and there's the noise. So you hear the difference? So it's just uh, count noise coming in on the encoder because our case is not connected to earth. So this case this case gets bolted onto the frame, and that reduces the noise in the system here. So I got this moved down to 80 milliseconds. Uh, there's a little bouncing, but my whole desk is sh shaking. So I gotta, I gotta start bolting things down if I want to affect the uh, settling time at the end of the move. Um, we could turn the gains down a little bit. Uh, too much PP just makes it a little more ringy. But uh, here's a little stiffer. And you can see a little bit more ring. So that's the basics. I uh, should be able to make moves. I got a little uh, error while I'm moving because I got the feed forward term cranked down. 16384 is 100%. But if this was point to point moves, uh, this might be sufficient. Uh, if I'm doing a scanning application, uh, I probably want to turn the feed forward term off and keep the error within a window while I'm moving at two meters a second. Thanks for watching.